Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we're at Formnext in Germany. We're taking a look at some of the latest and greatest tech in 3D printing. We're talking with some new partners, some old partners, and we're going to chop this up into lots of different videos so that we can try to cover as much as humanly possible. But first of all, let's play a game of jacket, no jacket, because sometimes I'm going to be hot and sometimes I'm not. And it's going to make it really difficult from an editing perspective. <laughs> Let's get in there. Hello guys and dolls, welcome back. We are with Ray's 3D and with Clonalto and we are talking about the DF2. This was launched on Tuesday, which bearing in mind, I don't, remember what, I don't know when we're launching this video, probably doesn't really have any relevance, but we're, we're, <laughs> it was launched at Form Next. <laughs> so this is your first foray into, uh, into resin 3D printing and it's a beast. So it comes as a set so you have the best looking washing cure station we've ever seen. You have the cure station over here. You have a really nice wash station. We'll get some shots of those in a minute. But the star of the show is the DF2 itself. So talk me through some of the specifications. What's uh, the secret sauce? What makes it special? Well, I can give you like a walkthrough maybe. Yeah. It comes with a feeding station. Yeah. Uh, the feeding station will know which kind of resin you are using. So it will automatically pump the resin into the tank and the tank will have a level sensor, yep. ultrasonic level sensor, so we just pump more resin according to the printed part that we're doing. And in the end, if you want to change resin, you can just take it out and put a new tank in. That right. way you don't need to wash it and do all the messy job that so, is working with the resin okay, printer. We'll get, we'll get a close-up shot of this in a minute, but you've just got, you've just got pin releases on yep, the sides. Exactly. That means just, that, the, that the vat just clips in. So I yeah. already love that. Okay, right. So then we're dealing with the largest touch screen I've ever yeah. seen. The touch screen is actually wider than the screen on the actual <laughs> printer. <laughs> it's huge. And this is incredibly responsive. So this is this is now the new touch screen that they've got. I, that, that is one of the big issues I have with a lot of touch screens on different machines is yeah. they're sort of slapped on as an afterthought. They're really slow, they're really yeah, sluggish, yeah, they're yeah, not I've responsive, really but here, we have, we have everything you could need. We've got nice light bars, and then am I seeing a, a camera, a camera inside? Exactly, exactly. So a remote monitoring camera as well. We've obviously got um, filters. Are these also heaters? Exactly. It right? heats the chamber up to 40 degrees, and yep. also have a filter here. And then we have an active carbon filter. Yeah. Right, exactly. okay, brilliant. So build volume is? Uh, 200, 300, 112. That's pretty sizable. And then we have a really chunky bill plate that if I do, have to, you have to release it. There's a yeah. button to release it. <laughs> so you yeah. just unlock the build plate from the screen. Sorry. Oh. He says. Oh, oh okay. It's unlocked already. <laughs> <laughs> it's magnetic, that's yeah. why. I didn't want to pull it really hard in case I pulled the machine over. So there's a magnet at the back that pulls this nice back. But when this goes on, the machine makes a bingly noise, and then you can press lock. Exactly. You press there lock, you <laughs> and it makes a real locky noise, and now the build plate won't come off. So it's got an RFID tag underneath here, so it can detect when the build plate is in, which means that if your build plate isn't fitted perfectly each time, you can have loads of shifts in your print and all sorts of things. So this is to completely combat that, and really, so, really let, cool. Let so. Resin. So yeah. obviously the resin, if you want to fill it with, if you want to use the auto refill, then yeah. you're using your resin bottles. But yeah. you can, this is still, this is open to, to third open, party. It's an open system. You can use a, a wide range of resins from uh, Loctite, from BASF, and hopefully more uh, partners in the future. Yeah. So, okay. So let's talk price. So this is... Rays are known for making high quality FDM machines. Yeah. This is your first foray into this space. What are we looking at for the whole kit? So wash, cure, and this machine. For the whole kit in euros, uh, 7,000 euros. 7,000 yeah, euros. Yeah, for the whole kit, including the finish station, the printer, and the wash and the cure. So we're Everything. talking about being able to resin print industrial grade parts, yep. ceramics, 
the ACF yep. stuff, this thing here, you know, all, yeah, <laughs> all of yeah. these these parts. Are, and we're talking a third of the price probably. of an industrial grade probably. resin printer. I'll have to look that, probably, it's, yeah. So, so uh, generally, if you're looking at industrial grade, you're looking at somewhere in the region of 20,000. We, 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 we market that as a professional range printer. But aggressively yeah, can, priced. Yeah, so yeah. let's talk print speed a second. So what are you doing in print speed in millimeters uh, an hour? So it's 25 millimeters per hour. 25 uh, millimeters yeah, an hour. But because it's a, a DLP printer, so it's just one burst of light yep. for each layer. So you can print one part or 20 parts. You don't care. It's always the same time. So 25 millimeters an hour. This is DLP. So you have to remember there is, so, so people often think there isn't a massive difference between MSLA and DLP. Yep. There is. Yeah, there is. Uh, so, so XY resolution on this is uh, in microns? In microns, 78.5, but yeah, it has anti-aliasing. Right. So that, well, that means it's that really average the surface, so you get way more uh, detail than that. Right. You won't okay, see cool. any, any people. So if you would do it, so okay, so that is the equivalent of around 8K in an MSLA machine. It should be. An MSLA screen will last you somewhere in the region of two to 4,000 hours, depending on what you're printing and, and, and how you abuse it. DLP is like, a lot more, right? So, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah, twenty thousand hours or something Probably. for most DLP yeah. light sources. Yeah. So, when you're building this into your overarching corporate model, you don't have to build in a consumable part, and your return on investment doesn't have to include buying screens, which you will have to do with come up with other with MSLA machines over and over and over again because they're consumable parts. So, let's talk a little bit about wash and cure. So, we've uh, also got with this. Uh, we have the, the smart peel plate, yep. which I think we were saying it, it's, it's used for to level. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not. Right. Okay. No, I need to stop it there. Uh, it's used to store all the info that you need. Right. Okay. That comes from my idea maker and goes to the washing and the cure, so it will know exactly how long you need to wash it, how long you need to cure it. So okay. Material. So so build plate goes into yep. into there. So this yep. is all. So the idea of the ecosystem is that it's touchless almost exactly so that you're never touching the part nope. until it's actually clean yeah, just grab it on the top just we have a tray put the tray just yep. to do a huge mess on the floor put it in there and then you'll know what to do so i have a consistent and constant issue where um i have sliced open my stomach on several occasions like that thing out of star wars where they have to live inside of it um when i've been trying to scrape things off of the build plate um, <laughs> yeah. and i've stabbed myself or i've removed parts of my hand or i've removed parts of my own clothes it's, it's a really terrible idea um i'm super clumsy about it i get resin everywhere and the idea of this is that because it's a touchless system you take the build plate yep. out of the printer exactly you go over to the wash yep. station you dock it straight in yeah and I'll... and then you press press the button it just yep. goes inside it just does that look and I don't even have to touch the lid because once it's gone all the way down, it does this. Wait. The lid closes on its own as well. Bye bye. Amazing. Then, once you've finished washing your, uh, washing your part, you're then able to take the bill plate straight off and it docks straight into the cure station. Yeah. When we come over to the cure yeah, station, it, it goes straight in. Yeah. We'll need the build plate back, obviously, yeah. rather than leaving it in there. That build will, plate comes off. Yeah, it will dry the part as well. Yep. And uh, once it's dry, you remove the, the part, the printed part, and you scan the bed there. The, the bed stays outside, the yep. printed part goes inside, and you'll know what to do with it. And we so just, can, and so again, yeah. same again, it comes off of the wash station. Yeah. We go over to the cure. Yeah. Remove the printed Sorry, part. Guys, so just get through. Sorry. Sorry. You need to remove the printed part. Yeah, you scan it and you open it. Oh, okay. That's touchless as yeah. well. This, this stays outside. This stays outside? Yeah, only the printed part goes Right, inside. okay. So then you just put the printed part in there yeah. and then it's a 360 degree chamber, which yeah. you can also heat at the same time as curing, yeah? Yeah, exactly. If you, you can 
to go up to 120 there, you can, of course, override all the settings manually. So, okay, so to. so that isn't something that a lot of people would be, would be doing when it comes to sort of more consumer-grade stuff. When you're dealing with these types of parts, you cure them at temperature rather than curing them in just UV light on their own. So it means that it creates a uniform cure. It stops internal warpage, so the heat helps it to cure at the same time the UV light source does. So you get a nice consistent, you don't use dimensional accuracy, and you get a nice consistent cure all the way through that part. So that is also really cool. And again, the idea that this is just so, closes like that. Does it? Go, go, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Have you had breakfast? Oh, yeah. oh okay, okay, yeah. Okay, and then when you want to open it, you touch there, it just pops open. Like genuine magic, it's amazing. Like this, so <laughs> when you deal with a lot of engineers, this is the kind of stuff they want to put in and loads of people eventually go, no, you can't put that in. It's a waste of money, it's a waste of time. That's not how Rays do things. <laughs> and instead they just go, absolutely you can do that. That's the coolest thing I've ever seen. So, <laughs> so you have a lot of features in these that are just aimed at making your life easier, your workflow simpler, and creating a really simple aesthetic as well as a really, really simple to use ecosystem of things. So very, very quickly, let's talk slicers. So Idea Maker is the proprietary slicer that, uh, that Ray's own, um, and they have all of their machines already in it. Uh, Ray's DF2 is going to still be in Idea Maker. So you don't have a new slicer, you don't have a new piece of software, yep. you just download that and it has and it will have a new machine in it and it will turn from an FDM slicer directly into a um, yep. directly into a, a slicer for, for a DLP machine and it will have preloaded the uh, the Ray's 3D proprietary um, materials as well. Yep. It's in USB. So, okay, so something we want to talk about here is, is, is magic parts. <laughs> so, you've sliced, so you've sliced a single model that yeah. fits in the middle of the build plate, exactly. and now you've decided that that part came out perfectly, so you want to replicate that across the whole build plate. And now you can demonstrate that you can just go in here on the machine without requiring you to go back into a slicer, and you, and you click magic, magic layout, layout, which is amazing. And then magic layout Magic again. layout, and it will literally duplicate the part and fill the build volume for you, creating a, creating a sustainable and repeatable way. You can then delete if you want. And, and you can remove enter. and move around individual parts. Yeah. Look at that. So can you, so when you do magic layout, can you say how many parts you want or does it just literally fill the bit, it fills you the can, build You can, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So oh, let me just undo it. Uh, you select it and then you... So you just copy, copy and paste yeah. and copy and paste yeah. and you can do individuals or you can just yeah. fill the whole build for Yeah, them. yeah, yeah. And okay, cool, right does that cool thing as well and then again you can drag all those around yeah. in real time all on the machine no extra slicing required no extra software just literally all on there okay cool oh my god my terrible old knees oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that was awful i shouldn't have been down there for that long oh. thank you so much for making okay. the time thank you catch you on the next video okay.